Uh, joining me today is Marta Garcia Landreu, the person that co the, the other co-executive director and artistic director who was the one that invited me to help her transition when her husband Nelson Landreu, the founder of Latea with Mateo and Nelson Tamayo, was starting to to become ill, and he just recently passed away in October of this year of 2019. So we have devoted a series of three programs, right, Rick? We're here with Rick Herrera, our engineer as well. And we've had three three podcasts. This is the last one. Uh, well, there will be more more homages and, and more discussion about Nelson's incredible legacy. But this is the fourth in this series uh, where Marta is sharing with us uh, this this whole experience of the theater, the movies, La Tea, Rincón Taino. And, of course, we're right now arriving at the, 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 the Clemente story and how hard it was and how you guys, you know, had these dark moments and after all all the struggle. You, you were saying in the last program something about the boiler and a million dollars and the credit. Where were we on the, on the Clemente Soto Vélez Foundation saga? Well, there's so much saga, <clears throat> saga and uh, issues, but <clears throat> one of the things that we were able to do that kept us going was that uh, Ed Vega was a writer and we owed a lot of money for the, um, the Connet. Okay. In the heat, there was no heat. <clears throat> but uh, we had um, Ed Vega got some royalties from his book sales, and he paid thirty thousand dollars. Incredible, the commitment. For what about Nelson's relationship with Ed? How how did Nelson and Ed meet, and what was their what was the chemistry between these two men? I don't remember which one of us three um, or four then said. You know, we need a board, and uh, we started recruiting people, and somebody, I don't remember whom, said, Ed Vega would be a good, he's feisty, he's good to do this, and we brought him on board, and he was on our board of directors. Nelson and I went to his house on 116th Street, brought him over, he fell in love with the idea, the building, the takeover, and right away we said, we need somebody upstairs to administer. He said, I'll do it. And we were like, yay. However... He has such a personality. Again, an issue of Nelson is very lateral, and here is somebody, you know, zigzagging, and the personalities were, were very different. I clashed immediately, almost after we agreed to, mm. you know, let's let's do this. There were issues also of a philosophy. Uh, my philosophy was very different. I like to branch out. Chat House was in a lot of problems, and it. I said, Ed, we have to help Chat House. You know, Chino has a lot of problems, and we need to unite. And he said, no, we have to save our own space. And I said, you are wrong. So we parted ways uh, as, a, as a result. But, but, but even with the tension, so I'm listening to this and, and hearing about the tension and, of course, the different styles, but didn't, at least at the beginning or for some time, would an Ed Vegas management of the, the building and the situations, would, did that afford Nelson some, some peace to, to create in the theater? Because perhaps in spite of all the, right, the, the, the natural sort of tensions that arise amongst, amongst collaborators, because the way we see, we, I see you and, and a lot of people saw you, it's the same team. Uh, albeit with different right philosophies but w was there a time now like I, I keep trying to find like a, a little bit of, of a space where the artist right. that, that that did all the effort well had even if it in perfect circumstances had the time to 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 direct plays to host other folks to do concerts was there a time like that and what, what time it period was that and, and again it, it was I'm giving you my perspective. If Nelson was here, he would give you his perspective. Of course, yeah. And no. then his perspective would be, she complained too much, but I was relieved that I could do everything that you're describing because somebody mm -hmm. else was handling and managing the floods and the no heat and the slew of people who were coming in and out of the building to see what was happening. And what was the vision, if, if we may, like what was Nelson's vision at, that, at this particular juncture? I'm assuming this is what, 95 to 98 or something like that, or 95, you know, like mm -hmm. when, when, when he has somebody else dealing with the floods most of the time, you know, um, or for, for a period of time. Uh, what was Nelson's vision 
uh, when, when the thing crystallizes a little bit, so there's the building, tons of problems. We have, you know, this guy that was in our board at Latea, who now is like, you know, handling the building. What was Nelson's vision for Latea at that particular juncture? It's a juncture? collective vision. It was a collective vision. Ed Vega was a visionary. Definitely a visionary. We no, but I mean at Latea. Was he also a vision? No, I'm talking about the theater that, that you and I are now are now you know handling was nelson as a theater as a director of the theater as a theater director as a as an actor not the building philosophy or the building but just for latea what was the direction nelson wanted or took for latea as a theater at that time he had a continuation of what we did at rincon taino however however the building was such a huge problem that it was very difficult to think out, you know, outside of that because we lived it, we smelled it, we lived with it 24-7 for, I think, 10 years or more. So it was very difficult um, until we saw the light, I believe it was in the early 90s, when finally the city said, you are the leaseholders. You are the guys who are responsible for this and so forth. And then Nelson said, De ahí me rajo. I got to produce. I cool. Gotta, that I was the do. takeoff of exactly. the dream of La Tea and of the programmatic. And we did very, very good in terms of the production qualities. <laughs> and this is where, where you not only did you have great productions that everyone remembers, but also, from what I gather, you, you also developed some unique uh, educational programs. You had a great rapport with the city as a, right. as a producing slash, you know, educational institution. What, are your fo what, what do you think would be one of Nelson's fondest memory of, of that time? What would have been like one, one of those days when you guys got together at the end of the day, whether it be a production, whether it be an education, whether you were just fixing the, the tables or the chairs? Give, me, give, give us something the that... The most exciting times for him and for all of us when people got word of, hey, there's some Latinos there and they have a cultural center. We started seeing producers, writers, actors coming in, auditioning for plays we were going to have. And we, we actually served as an economic base for a lot of unemployed actors. We found a way to pay them. <laughs> and also would always say, ¿Y de dónde vamos a sacar los chavos? And then he would always find a way. You know, he took from Peter to pay Paul and sometimes didn't even pay the rent, but he paid the actors. So that, that was, from my point of view, that was a downfall. Mm. Oh, well, but in a way, it was a downfall, but we've managed. I mean, now that, that you and I have, have tried to continue, are continuing with what you and Nelson started with Mateo and, and, and Tamayo, I mean, we, we are somehow honoring the spirit of Nelson in that we are a very modest but, but turbine, right? Like where people right. are coming, and I sense that people are coming back again because they, they respect that tremendous commitment, that tremendous generosity of spirit, and also certain highlights that they have come to to right. admire and respect in the on the craft of drama, on the production for Latinos, because because right. we've been shut out, right? right? But before we go forward, because um, uh, I would like uh, our engineer, uh, the Rick Herrera, who has been extremely generous with Latea in hosting this podcast and 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 you know promoting it. To, 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 when, when we first came in and we were talking about Nelson, uh, you were mentioning that, that you didn't meet Nelson or did you meet Nelson? No, I didn't meet Nelson. Uh, when I first was intro introduced to Anthony, then you, um, I, heard, I asked them specifically about the history of the theater. Because whenever I go to any type of theater, and at that time I had this one-man show that I was looking for a home to you know, perform it at, I said, what is the history of this? Uh, and then that's when they started explaining you know, Nelson, they brought up Nelson and they brought up all the people and instantly I was inspired and I wanted to perform here because before I even, I kind of like, it all clicked to me. I was like, wow, they were giving voices to Latinos and artists that needed a home to present their work. And to that, to me, I'm a very spiritual and a, a true artist in a sense that like, it's about the passion. And I heard that story and I felt it. And even just walking down in this building, you, you sense you could feel the history. And I wanted to know that and I actually wanted to 
be a part of that, knowing that at the end of the day, wherever I go, it's like there's a historical Latino theater, mm -hmm. and I knew the history, but I performed there. And to me, that hearing that, being on this podcast and hearing the other series, I I'm just honored to hear it, and I'm <laughs> honored that I even perform even more because now I got it from the wife. And like to me, I, I appreciate you, and I want to give you a hug after this because it took a team effort to really put 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 this on the map. And you know, you played a big hit, a part of that as a strong woman and being the business person as well, and doing the legwork. And then the artist, they also did what they had to do. And I I think it was at the end of the day, it, it showed a true journey of what hope looks like when you keep on pushing through, no matter what as long as you believe in something uh, we are you you know we we are going to keep revisiting throughout the year and the podcast uh, Nelson's story I mean because again we are so um, influenced by, by by his genteel ways by his generosity and spirit but you know we want to end this program because um, because time is running out after this tremendous testimonial by Rick which is like the struggle continues people keep coming here that kind of thing I, I wanted to ask Marta so so what is I, there's been some turmoil recently it's like we're never out of the woods um here at the clemente uh and especially as the latea you know foundational theater of the clemente and what do you see going forward where 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 do you think we are and what would be your your aspirations your hopes and also your fears in in, in as our little ship sails on you know uh these waters wow that's uh the million dollar question um I'm very optimistic, very optimistic. Why? The city has come around to an elected, some elected officials, and more importantly, our community. We started the Save the Clemente Coalition, and I was surprised to see how many people started to come into on board and basically say, we're there for you, we're there for you. I have a lot of trust in that community. We did it once and we'll do it again if necessary. I feel more combative or just as when we started this and it's, it's not gonna go away. The 28, now 29% of the population, Latinos here in New York is increasing even more with what happened in Puerto Rico and what is happening in Latin America throughout. So I think that population numbers are going to be respected. And I see some of that already. When the Tres Amigos got together and we started talking to uh, elected officials, I saw some of that. And so that's why I'm trusting that and more importantly, our community. Our community is not gonna allow another charras or another organization in the city uh, to be lost. And just to, to end this program again, dedicated to, to Nelson's legacy, to, to the memory of his enormous achievements, both as an art, as a human being, as a, as a husband and companion, as, a, as an artist, both in film and theater, and as a founder of a theater and a cultural center in the Lower East Side. Um, what, you know, I, I, at the end, I, I also, thanks to, to you and Nelson, I had the privilege of visiting you and sharing some of those moments. But prior to, to the, you know, to the hardest moments at the end, what was Nelson's feeling, you think, about this direction and, and the hopes that you're describing and the challenges? How did he feel towards the end? What's your, what was your feeling? I think, well, first of all, I think I would be a myth if I didn't thank you for taking over his, what he called, la nena, which is la dea. And you've done an incredible job. When you came into the picture, he was more hopeful. He was too ill in the last two years or three um, to even think about what was happening or what was to be happening. Um, his whole demeanor, changed and he was more um, introverted than I have ever seen him for 30 past years. So I cannot tell you what he thought. I can tell you what he would have thought. What he would have thought is, metele fuego, negra, metele fuego. 
That would have been his last words to me. And then he would also say, y no te preocupes, que todo está bien. 